Becky Witzman here to take you through the week on HRTV. All right, it's opening sure. day on Saturday, delayed one day at Oakland Park. Their steak originally scheduled for opening day Friday, if you're just joining us, will be run on Sunday. So opening day is Saturday, right. opening weekend right here on HRTV. Okay. What's the population of Hot Springs? I've been there since 1989, and it was not that crowded when I was there. I'm going to say, uh, I don't know, 100,000? 40,000. That's it? 40,000 Hot Springs, Arkansas. What's the attendance on Arkansas Derby Day? Probably 100,000. There's no one pumping gas. It's twice the population <laughs> okay. for crying out Everybody's loud. coming, yeah. And what is the Arkansas state motto? Um, the... the Beat Texas. It could be. <laughs> be it Texas. could be. be. They're not the Southwest Conference anymore, so I don't know. But, but the state motto for Arkansas? The people rule. Sounds good. How do you like that? All right. Going to rule the racing right now in Hot Springs. Opening weekend, Saturday and Sunday, right here on HRTV. Larry Jones is returning to the training scene and looking forward to a big meet in Arkansas. Welcome back. You took the, the year hiatus, and, and so what inspired you to come back and train horses again? Well, my wife had told me it was time for me to get off my duff and go back to work. <laughs> and uh, she'd had all of this fun she could take. She said she had an owner that was just driving her nuts and always complaining <laughs> his horses didn't run often enough. They didn't win enough. And I'll be honest with you guys, I didn't think I was that bad. <laughs> I, I thought I was being good to her. <laughs> well, you're going to have a loaded stable. I mean, it, obviously, uh, you can take over the horses that your wife has been training, but you're going to have some uh, added firepower, I understand. you got some nice horses coming in, too. Well, we really have. I, I was. It was kind of hard to turn this training job down. You know, Cindy had just... Uh, one grade one with no such word in New York. Uh, she's letting me uh, have her. She, and we've also, uh, from Fox Hill Farms, we have uh, kind of come back together on a limited number of horses, but we have Habit of Grace uh, that actually run third in the Breeders' Cup, uh, one of the top uh, two three-year-old fillies in the country last year. Uh, we have Winslow Homer, uh, which had been on the Derby Trail uh, last year. Uh, he'll be coming back as an older horse. Uh, we have a Joyful Victory has joined the barn, which ran in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies. We'll be trying to point her towards the uh, the Oaks. Uh, so yeah, it's kind of uh, kind of exciting. We've got some good horses uh, to come back with, and uh, so hopefully we'll uh, we'll continue on and do well. We caught up with Roly Hoyt and Mary Rampolini to see how Oakland was warming up for their spring meet. There's nothing like the excitement that goes on here in Hot Springs, Arkansas. I mean, nationally, people know about Saratoga, and they know about uh, Del Mar, and they know about Keeneland and the way the town gets behind those race meets. But uh, I don't think any of those could they're equal to or, or surpassed by the excitement that comes here in Arkansas for, for the opening of Oaklawn and for the entire season here. What's it like opening day morning? Well, fortunately, we were able to get the track open this morning at uh, 6.40 a.m. The horses started coming out to uh, train, and several horses within the first hour did work over the surface. So that's always a good sign, you know? Mary, it's got to be really exciting. That's uh, one of the best boutique meetings of, uh, in North America. And although we had to wait a day, I guess everybody's kind of geared up and ready to go. Yes, you know, guys, this Saturday card was really worth the wait because there's a lot of interesting three-year-old action. Um, not only does the Dixie Bell uh, start as the uh, first feature of the season for three-year-old fillies, but also a horse that has a lot of buzz around here, Elite Alex, is uh, considered one of the better three-year-olds on the grounds this meet. And uh, he's a son of a Fleet Alex, trained by Tim Ritchie, who, of course, trained champion of Fleet Alex. Put and take by Mazakamba is driving to the lead in Andrew Willie. The Dixie Bell will go to Mazakamba by a half. And here comes Win Willie picking him up and laying him down. He's got to get Stashies. Can he get there? It's Stashies. Win Willie to the outside and Win Willie gets up and wins it in. New York fan favorite evening attire was honored Saturday at Aqueduct with the stakes race. During a span of eight seasons, yes, eight seasons, evening attire developed a legion of fans. His popularity wasn't entirely based on his longevity as a racehorse. His reliability also played a key role. The Gelding, a darling among New York racing fans, was a picture of consistency, finishing in the money 58% of the time. 
and they're off. Evening attire was off slowly today, just walked right out of the gate. Evening attire was usually a little tardy leaving the gate, but his patented late run often made up for his hesitant starts. Yes, Evening Attire did it! The old warhorse did it! The son of 1991 Breeders' Cup Classic winner Black Tie Affair rattled off stakes victories at each of New York's major tracks. And it's the nine-year-old gelding, Evening Attire! His richest payday for his trainer, Pat Kelly, and owners Joe Grant and T.J. Kelly, came at Belmont Park in 2002. And Evening Attire is going to do it! Going away to win the Jockey Club Gold Cup! One of Evening Attire's most talked about victories occurred in the 2004 Saratoga Breeders' Cup. And Evening Attire takes the lead! In that race, he defeated the previous year's Kentucky Derby winner, Funny Side, by five lengths. In July of 2008, Evening Attire took his final bow in the Greenwood Cup at Philly Park. But it's Evening Attire drawing away. The 10-year-old's gonna do it again. Nearly white with age, but still very much young at heart. The 10-year-old won the mile and a half test by eight and a quarter lengths. These days, Evening Attire calls Akendale Farm in Pauling, New York home. No longer in the racing spotlight, Evening Attire is still part of the fabric of New York racing. He is remembered each year with a stakes in his honor at Aqueduct. Give us some of your memories of the Big Gray. Well, I never got to ride him, but he beat me a couple of times. He beat me in the Saratoga Cup, um, and uh, I, I actually went, yeah, I went and visited him yesterday. That's a picture of me there with him at Aikendale, which is just up the road from me. And it, it's a wonderful place, a thousand-acre sanctuary for these old uh, warriors. And he knows he's good. He's out there in a the field with his brother and another horse, and, and he's the boss. You know, the, the horse players are hardened, and they want that <laughs> mutual ticket, and that's pretty much what they care about. But when you get a horse like Evening Attire, I guess he's beloved by everybody, uh, the fan, the horse player, everybody. He must have been extremely popular when he ran. Very popular. And he gets a lot of visitors, which is good, because we need to you know, keep the, the main focus of these horses when they retire, that they need a place to go and a good life. And, and actually, Akendale Farms taken a horse that's been in the news a lot lately, Hot Stuff and then some. And he's going to be turned out with evening attire, and they raced against each other. So that, that'll be a little interesting to see if they get along in the field. Arson's squad on the outside in third. They're at the furlong marker. Still, Hart Butte with the lead. El Maduro is all out in second. Then Arson squad, Gumbada Gusker, and more than a reason. 70 yards out, it's Hart Butte. They've got racing coming up in 17 minutes at Portland, 17 out to the ninth at Tampa. We're not going to preview them because we have the HRTV premiere of the 1999 commercial for Cornetto ice cream featuring our own Millie Ball. See if you can find her. She's horseback. Let's roll it. We'll discuss after. <laughs> Just help yourself to my lips, to my arm, just say the word. Just help yourself to the love in my heart, your smile is opened up the door. Walls Cornetto, it's a love thing. Let's first dispel the rumor that that was not Tim in the Cupid <laughs> suit, and that's not how you guys met. So it let's, is let's, not, let's get but it is a straight. love thing. It's a love thing. Millie Ball, <laughs> she is a renaissance woman. This week's Claiborne Stakes Showcase was the Grade 3 Mr. Prospector Stakes at Gulfstream Park. The last time we saw Big Drama, he was front and center at Churchill Downs, stealing the show and a $1 million purse. But it's Big Drama digging deep and finding more. Big Drama will win it. Big Drama has won the sprint. Will that victory earn the two-time millionaire an Eclipse Award? He's been really good to us over the years. He's done everything we've asked always to do. But before that envelope is opened, Big Drama has business to take care of at Gulfstream Park. Big Drama is back! One minute, 20.88 seconds. Wow! Among the five-year-old's rivals is the race's defending champion. Custom for Carlos will win the Mr. Prospector. On race since winning at Oaklawn Park nine months ago, Custom for Carlos's recent head-turning morning workouts say he is fit and ready. It's a tough assignment, and he's ready to make his first start. Which of these sprinters will prove the fastest? Watch the drama unfold in the Grade 3 $100,000 Mr. Prospector Stakes.
I think when you're sprinting, you know, the outside is always an advantage. You know, we, we drew the one in the Breeders' Cup, which, you know, obviously didn't hurt us, but, but uh, I like the outside post. Post one is never ideal um, in a situation like this with lots of speed to our outside. Uh, so we'll just let Julian play it by ear, depending on how he breaks. No instructions really for Julian. He'll just play it by ear and, and uh, just play the race as it unfolds. Oh, he means a lot to us. He's been really good to us over the years. I mean, he swept the stallion stakes. He's done everything we've asked the horse to do. Really a nice horse. If it's a long layoff, he hasn't run since April, and um, he had a foot injury that prevented him from uh, training and racing for most of the summer and fall. So now we've uh, had some good, decent works in him this uh, past six or eight weeks at Palm Meadows, and he's ready to make his first start. It's, uh, it's a tough assignment uh, from the layoff, running against horses like Big Drama, who's probably the champion sprint horse. So uh, it's not ideal, but you gotta start somewhere. A 44 and two half mile, they're into the stretch. Big drama to the inside. Custom for Carlos taking it to him. They're nose to nose. The Breeders' Cup winner, Big Drama, trying to put away Custom for Carlos, and he is doing it with ease. Big drama, wow! He won it by four and 108 flat. It's a new track record. Custom for Carlos, our edge, and peace at dawn. Big Drama is likely for the Male Sprinter Eclipse Award, but Horse of the Year is still up for debate. And, and of course, Jerry, you know, all the votes have been cast. Should Zenyatta's immense popularity be a factor in the Horse of the Year voting, or do you think it should solely be a function of what's transpired on the racetrack? Well, I, I think we should never forget the fans and uh, what they mean to racing in general, you know. And uh, there's no doubt that uh, over the years, and certainly this year, uh, Zenyatta has uh, has uh, really gotten some tremendous fan attention. You know, uh, when you when you when you draw 45,000 people to Oakland Park on a Friday afternoon, uh, that means a lot of people want to see you. And um, my belief is that uh, the fans should play a greater part, perhaps, uh, and we have to figure a way to make make that possible. But I don't believe that just because she's popular, she should get this award. I believe she should get this award because of what she's accomplished on the racetrack time and time again. He is more than likely going to win some kind of Eclipse Award, whether it be horse of the year, old male, what have you. It's good to see, good to know that, that this horse has done this and the hard work that you've put in and everything. He's going to get this kind of uh, award on Monday night? Oh, yeah, yeah. I think he's deserving of everything that comes his way. He was just a... He's always been a good horse. He's a great-looking horse. He's a very well-bred horse. He's a beautiful horse to deal with. He, he's anybody could come pet him. Uh, yeah, he, if he had had a, a, a bunch of people coming around him like Zenyatta, he would have handled that just like her, just very relaxed and calm, and uh, nothing ever bothered him. And and then he'd go on a racetrack and he, he'd have a killer instinct, which is I, I think that's just about what the definition of a racehorse is. And um, yeah, he definitely deserves whatever comes his way. Hopefully it's a horse of the year. He is going to do something tomorrow that's never been done before. That's what Sham's trainer, Pancho Martin, told Lafitte Pinkai Jr. the night before 1973 Kentucky Derby. And he was right. They're at the head of the stretch, and Sham is the leader. Secretariat on the outside to take the lead. Sham holding in second. At the wire, it's going to be Secretariat. He wins it by two lengths. He still holds the record for the second fastest derby ever run. Simply put, Sham was the right horse, but in the wrong place. There's a strong left-handed whip again by Pinkai. Time and time again, but Ronnie Turcott has his whip put away. And Secretariat has him put away. At the wrong time. This weekend, Sham's legacy is remembered at Santa Anita Park. This week's Lane's End feature race was the grade three Sham Stakes honoring the great racehorse. You see Sham in what looks like a winning move in front of Secretariat, and we'll take another mm -hmm. look at that right there. If you, if you notice, you can see Secretariat's nose right in here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, tell us about that photo. That I saw in an article um, it, that I 
got permission from the um, Louisville Courier Journal to use that photo. I really liked it. I particularly like. Can we hold that up again? Oh, sure, sure. Uh, what I really liked about that we can get another look at the book photo here. was that it really captured the emotion. If you can see in the top row, the uh, the media were really playing up Secretary his charisma and how popular he was. And if you look at the young ladies in the top row there, uh -huh. you can just really see in their faces. There's like four or five of them. Uh. Really, the emotion, and I thought that really captured it nicely. And uh, that plus this is the final stretch yeah. of the Derby, and Sham is ahead, so I like that as well. Tappers are in front by just under two. Clubhouse right chases gamely, but Tappers are is just playing too good today. And it's going to be Tappers are and Garrett Gomez coming home with his ears pricked to win the Sham Stakes by almost four. How does this feel to win a top three year old race in California? It always feels great to win. I mean, no doubt about that. Uh, you know, a little concern we we're going down the back stretch because we went a little fast, but he got it done, so we're happy today. With what you saw in the mornings, how confident that you were going to handle this jerk course today with Tapazar? Well, he's trained very nicely here. His last race was excellent, showed a lot of ability. You know, just uh, very proud of the race he put in today, a lot sharper, uh, sharper than we expected. But uh, he was away from the gate smoothly and uh, looked like he came home nice. You know, uh, just want to thank uh, Ron you know, for the opportunity with a horse like him and can't say enough about how, what a good sire Tappet is. You know, we're so happy that he came out to California given his last performance at Churchill. Would the intention be to keep him here in California to run throughout our three-year-old races? Well, I think the day was a, a big question for us to make sure that the last race was for real and we weren't kidding ourselves. You know, we want to know if he's a contender or a pretender, and I think the, definitely today was a race to be excited about. We'll try to do what's right by him physically, and hopefully he gets us there. Top class Phillies competed in the grade two El Encino Stakes Sunday at Santa Anita. So you have Champagne Doro in today with the track playing to speed. She was a little further back than you would have liked last time. Tell me about her last race. Well, actually, I think what it was, you know, the track was hard on the bottom because they were scared to lose it. It was sealed and it was slippery on top. And her footing, she's kind of a horse that needs to get a footing behind. And maybe I was thinking about possibly if I can get her some shoes like you have on, Zora, today. <laughs> If I get shoes like this, there's no way that she'll slip around anymore. She's ready. She's, you can see her works, but she's ready to run. She wants to run. She's well, feeling good. Well, she's ready to run, and that she'll do this <clears throat> afternoon, but you're ready to maybe collect some hardware. Aren't you uh, down in Florida already poised to go to the Eclipse Award dinner tomorrow night? Tell us about that. We're sitting here on the beach waiting for tomorrow <laughs> night to go in and get the Eclipse Award. <laughs> you sound pretty confident. Well, I don't know. If we don't get it, we'll burn the hotel down. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just teasing. Blind luck is plugging away in the center, but she doesn't have that electrifying run. But now she's starting to close. Always the princess finds more on the lead, though, and blind luck will not get to her. A huge performance, as always, the princess takes the Allen Cena under Raphael Bayorana. We have to check. Arnold, are you wearing the lucky socks? He is wearing the lucky socks. It's actually unbelievable. You're, you're talking about us beating Rachel last year with Zardana, and, and now we come and beat Blind Luck, who is a fabulous filly, and tomorrow night she, she'll get the award. So uh, I'm sure she'll come back and do great, but all I know is today we won. What went on with Joel Rosario and Blind Luck after the wire? Uh, Lafitte was very, very upset about the race. He also said that when they were on the backstretch, she did not want to pull up as he tried and tried. When he finally got her to pull up, she stumbled and he was just knocked head over tea kettle. He says he's okay, but he said he was just very, very disappointed. He, he really thought today was the day. Santa Anita's weekend also included other stakes and a stallion's return to racing. Doug, he's been training absolutely fabulously here. Tell me about his workouts. He's doing fantastic. Everything, like you say, he's training great, doing all on his own. And uh, got to thank the Redhams, uh, Paul and Zilla. And, and actually, Zilla's dad's here, Johnny, so we want a picture so badly with him. But if he runs the way he's working, I think we're all going to be smiling in about uh, 12 minutes. But they're all chasing Square Eddie, who's still full of run. And Square Eddie, powerful today. Square Eddie showing a touch of class. He wins this one. Wow. Well, he broke the track record. He's now the new track record here at Santa Anita. Uh, what, are you, what are your long-term plans for him? You said you had a plan from the beginning. Well, that plan was two years ago, but <laughs> uh, he's, uh, the biggest thing was to make sure the horse was actually back. He's had uh, 
with some leg injuries over the last couple of years, and it took a long time to finally heal, but he sure looks like he's healed. And the fact that he went fast sprinting really doesn't mean anything one way or the other because uh, he clearly can sprint, but we've always thought this horse was actually a mile and a quarter horse. If you look at his, his breeding, that's what it says. So that's the, kind of the exciting part. Good horse can sprint a, a route. They come for home, Californian Nectar's all hot on the lead, Zazu catching inch by inch, Californian Nectar, Zazu, Californian Nectar, what a brave win that one was. Well, she broke really well, you know, uh, going down the backside, I felt like I was Superman because I was on Supergirl because she was flying, but uh, she was well, well relaxed, she had her ears pricked, and when it came to her at the quarter pole, she, she went on about her business and held off a late charging Zazu. Tweetster and Indian Fire. I wasn't sure, but I knew it was Bob's other horse, so I knew he'd be happy either way. I'd like to wish him happy birthday. And I give all the credit to him, actually, because he called an audible just before I walked outside the jocks room. He said, you know, get away good, but you don't have to be in the lead. Just before I left, he said, put him on the lead, so it worked. Marty Jones remembered one of his favorite Santa Anita stars on Wednesdays across the board. S. Pal goes back to that time where he just seemed like I'm not going to call him bulletproof, but he was he was just tough. He just, no matter what, he got through all the little aches and pains and kept going. Yeah, he was a very tough horse, and, uh, you know, he did it consistently for five years here and really never had too many setbacks, you know. And he was a special horse. I mean, you know, he was a horse for me that I'll, you know, I'll always remember and uh, will be a special horse for me. Who do you think rode him best? Uh, there's a, like a ton Ooh. of riders <laughs> rode him. A ton of riders Put rode him. Oh, uh, jeez, that's, you know, it didn't matter for that horse. Really? You know, I think that... But, uh, you know, those good horses like that, obviously the rider makes a difference, but the, 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 those horses, will, they'll make the riders look good. You know, I got a chance to work around him, too, in Mendel, so I know what you mean when you say tough, but I think Best Pal takes toughness to a certain, a yeah. different level. I know there was a story of an injured groom when he was in your dad's barn. What happened there? Well, I mean, I don't know um, which groom he injured. He, I mean, he ripped my thumbnail out one morning. Uh, <laughs> I heard I was, it actually when I was taking his him. finger off. Well, yeah, he took my thumbnail out and just ripped it completely out. Oh, you're out. the one. <laughs> uh, uh, one morning. So, you know, I mean, that's just the kind of horse he was. He was... Uh, he was an aggressive horse, and you know he had his space, and you know he was one of those horses that uh, he, he was the boss, and mm -hmm. uh, you just had to try and work with him the best you could. That's all for HRTV this week. Here's a look at what's coming up.